A murderer received a lesser prison sentence today. It is the first case to be impacted by a Colorado Bureau of Investigation DNA analyst whose work is under investigation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marshall Zellinger. And I'm Jennifer Meckles. Kim and Tom are off tonight. An internal report revealed CBI analyst Missy Woods manipulated data in hundreds of cases, including a Boulder County case that today led to a plea deal in a triple homicide. Nine News reporter Kelly Rinke listened into the sentencing, and Kelly, the family of the victims here do not believe this is justice. Family of the victims in this case said the defendant is getting off easy, and niece told the judge this man is getting a lesser sentence because of the incompetence of CBI. This is really the first test to see how Woods' conduct could impact the criminal justice system. The district attorney in Boulder told me he believes this is the right outcome based on what they know now, but this experience is definitely painful. The case of Garrett Coughlin is complex. A jury in 2019 found Coughlin guilty of murder for killing three longtime family friends, Kelly Slow White, Wallace White, and Emery Fraker. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The conviction was eventually overturned because of juror misconduct, and he was granted a new trial. Then prosecutors back in 2023 learned their DNA analyst on the case, Missy Woods, deleted data back then. Her work was crucial because it helped them disprove alternate suspects. And now her integrity is compromised. And today, prosecutors and defense attorneys agreed on a plea deal. Instead of life behind bars, Coughlin was sentenced to 42 years. I've never seen anything like this in my entire career, and I hope to never see it again. The reality is that there are hundreds of other cases that have been impacted by Missy Woods' conduct. And I hope the CBI continues to look into why this happened, how it happened, and the impacts of what's been revealed thus far. The DA's office said this agreement guarantees Coughlin takes responsibility. Family was angry now that Coughlin has the chance to leave prison in his lifetime, in part because of the misconduct of Woods. Jenny. And to your point, so many more cases that could follow this. This is just the very beginning of the Missy Woods stuff. Yeah, really. Let's see if other defense attorneys are looking at this case as an example of how it's going to impact the criminal justice system. All right. Kelly Rinke, thank you for your reporting. Well, from a 60-some-odd degree studio to a live look outside, we're, we're having day two now of the 90s. So clearly the date must be like late July. Right, Kathy? Yeah, because yep. Two days mm -hmm. of 90s does not mean June 6th. I know. And you said you were going to be mad at me if I was right and we hit 90 again today. Well, I have some good news and some bad news. We hit 90 downtown, but we're still only 86 out at DIA. So officially, we haven't hit 90. But where people live, we have. How are you feeling about that? The weather station should be in Central Park. <laughs> I know, says you and everyone else. Uh, and some other bad news for you, Marshall. Uh, it's going to be even warmer tomorrow. Friday will be the warmest day of the week. I have a high close to 94 degrees, but not for the weekend. As a matter of fact, today with sunshine and bright blue skies, you wouldn't know that a weak front backed into the front range last night, but it has brought temperatures down a few degrees. Not cool enough for Marshall and for many of you, I know that, but at least we're not dealing with the wind that we dealt with yesterday, especially along the foothills. The early summer heat continues for one more day. Isolated storm to track on Friday, a whole different weather pattern for the weekend. Cooler with scattered showers and storms both Saturday and Sunday. Average high is 80. We're at 86 at the airport after starting off at 52. Record high for the date, 95. I think we come close to that number tomorrow. Sun setting now at 825 in the evening. Ooh, just popped up to 87, Marshall, out at DIA. Uh, 89 in Pueblo, 87 in Lamar, and close to 100 degrees for some perspective for you there in Grand Junction, almost 100 this afternoon. Winds are lighter piece of good news there yesterday I was saying it was a beautiful day and a lot of you in the foothills were telling me no it's not beautiful the wind is blowing uh, but today it's a calmer day and so far the air quality has improved the ozone action alert expired at four o'clock let's hope that continues a couple of isolated storms over the Colorado New Mexico line tonight but off to the east is where all the action is and all the storms that will impact travel not a lot to show you on radar yet but that will be changing in the next 12 to 24 hours so if you're weather threat remains low and remains south and east of the area. So enjoy the evening. We're going to break down the Friday forecast and the weekend for you coming up in just a bit. Kathy, thank you. A report of potential explosives this morning drew out the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office bomb squad to the Cherry Creek Dam area. Turns out these were likely homemade fireworks. Bomb technicians found two devices and after checking them out, deputies say they look like fireworks and they're not strong enough to cause any real damage to buildings. 
When law enforcement proactively shares dash cam, it's usually something non-controversial that they want to show off about. Like Douglas County Sheriff's deputy stopping a chase by making the car they're following spin around. There's a rear passenger trying to get out. Vehicle's slowing down. We're at 28. I'm going to go for a TBI. Two people were taken into custody following that. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office said the driver was in a stolen car on I-25. The chase ended near Castle Pines Parkway. You heard the deputy say a passenger was trying to get out, but the Douglas County Sheriff's Office said no one was hurt. Drunk driving is suspected in a deadly crash that shut down part of West Colfax and Lakewood for hours yesterday morning. 37-year-old Ilya Slavin from Centennial is in jail, accused of drinking and driving and causing that fatal crash just before 6 a.m. The truck he was driving slammed a car at Colfax and Garrison, then rolled into a shopping center where it hit another car. One woman died, and another woman was taken to a hospital with several injuries. This was a first for Steve on your side. <laughs> a Littleton woman called, asking Steve to help prove that she's alive. She called, so well, this woman came back from vacation to find her bank accounts frozen and her Medicare plan canceled. Turns out someone had reported her death to Social Security. She is alive and well and has now spent weeks trying to clean this mess up. Here's 9 News consumer investigator Steve Steger. As a reporter, I've been trained not to ask questions with one word responses. You don't get the great soundbite that way. Unless this is the question. Are you dead or alive? It depends. Say what? According to Social Security, I am deceased. Christine Rowe learned about her own death the day after she got back from vacation and tried to log into her bank account. It didn't work. So I called the bank and I said, you know, I've been a customer for 30 some odd years and I can't sign, it seemed to sign on. And the gal went dead quiet. Dead quiet because the bank had been informed Christine was dead and closed her accounts. She noticed some doctor's appointments were canceled, too, and she got a letter from her Medicare plan addressed to her estate. Quote, we're very sorry for your loss and understand this is a difficult time. Difficult time. No kidding. Everything in my life has either been frozen or canceled because Social Security says I'm deceased. You have no idea how they got the idea that you're dead. None. Christine Rowe is not dead. And then I'm still up. You're playing Mexican train yesterday. I'm out. <laughs> and I won, by the way. In fact, she's living quite well. And these two women that I play with say, you need to call Steve. And I said, I'm not going to call Steve Staker. He's busy. I've always got time to bring someone back from the dead, so I did call her back. And I'm at Costco, as, as you call. And heard proof that Christine was, in fact, very alive. And I'm standing at the checkout with my case of vodka and talking to Steve Steger. While Christine enjoyed that vodka, Steve on your side reached out to Social Security and learned Christine isn't alone. They told us of the 3.1 million deaths reported to them each year, less than a third of 1% are wrong and need to be corrected. Now, that sounds small as a percentage, but when you use a calculator, it equals about 10,000 people a year wrongfully reported dead. They wouldn't tell us why they thought Christine Rowe died, but said anyone they accidentally kill should go to their Social Security office to get things sorted out, which sounds like a fun afternoon. And that was a four-hour wait. Four hours later, all Christine got was a promise that things would get sorted out. No answers as to what happened. Now she's working hard to convince credit card companies, her pension fund, and her retirement accounts that rumors of her demise were greatly exaggerated. My heirs know that I'm alive, and um, I plan to stay that way for quite some time. So Christine did finally get a letter from Social Security that offers her free credit monitoring, and she can give that letter to anyone who still thinks that she's dead. If this happens to you, Social Security says you should go to the office and bring a non-expired piece of identification to prove that you are, in fact, not dead. And if you have a consumer problem, our email on the screen there, or you can call the Steve on your side hotline. That's 303-871-1700. In the studio, Steve Steger, 9 News. So you have to show up alive yes. with a document. That says you're alive. And, and if you, you don't have that document, yes. but I'm breathing, 
but like, look at me. But I'm, I'm the person in this picture and I'm here and I'm alive. Then they'll give you a number, you wait for four hours and then you get it all sorted out. I'm just glad she got her vodka at the Costco. Just to, that feels like that helped everybody get through this, I know. this it, nightmare a little bit easier. Can I tell you how much it warms my heart when someone calls me when they're at Costco or yeah. when I get to talk to someone at Costco? <laughs> one, la <laughs> one last question, Steve. Are you Monty Python, she's not dead yet, <laughs> or are you Mel Brooks, she's alive? Ooh, I'd probably go with Mel because she's alive. She's alive. Sounds a lot better. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> yeah. Endless shrimp is becoming this endless story mm -hmm. as Red Lobster mm -hmm. looks to shutter four more Colorado restaurants. Today, the company shared a list of locations likely to close if the court approves the bankruptcy plans for the company. So Red Lobster has filed for bankruptcy last month, already shut down about 50 locations nationwide. The company says it's a billion dollars in debt, and they're going to sell the business back to its lenders and return for some financing to keep operating. So to be clear, they're trying to keep some stores open. And yet the plan here is to close some of the nearly 600 restaurants. The new list of locations on the chopping block include the iconic Times Square location. Here in Colorado, there are four new names on the proposed closure list. The Springs location on North Academy, one off College Ave in Fort Collins, the Red Lobster on 23rd in Greeley, and a fourth in Pueblo. Again, these locations will only close if the court approves the company plan. Four other locations already closed last month.